Hello and welcome back. So in this video I want to discuss factor codings a bit. And what that is, is we have already seen if we have a categorical variable with k classes, k levels, then what we do is we add k minus 1 columns to the model to the design matrix. And for the first k minus 1 or some selected k minus 1 classes, we write a 1 in the corresponding column whenever we have a sample of this class. And one class, the reference level, that is left out. If we encounter this, we just write zeros. And I want to just come back to this a bit and explain a bit more why is it k minus 1 classes. And then based on this, I want to explain a tiny bit what else could you do. So that's not the unique best choice, but there are alternative choices. And I want to just run you a bit of what these alternatives look like. Okay, so let's have a look. So let me first recall what did we do. So if x is an input which has possibly non-numerical values or at least non-ordered and discrete values, which I want to just call a1 up to ak, these are called the levels of a factor, then what we did in the design matrix, we added k minus 1 columns, so 1 up to k minus 1, and we write a 1 in a column if we are in the corresponding class, so we write x i j, let's call the variable x twiddle to not have too many x's, x i j is 1 if x twiddle i is of class j, so equals a j, and 0 otherwise, so that gives us 1's here. And there is one special rule, namely that's for j only up to k minus 1. And if we have class k, then we add a whole row of zeros. And let me also remind you why we did this. Why don't we have k columns? The reason is that normally there is also an intercept. So that is one everywhere. And if we would have this extra column k here, which would be one here, then if we would add these columns corresponding to the factor, then we would get one in every row. So the sum would always be one. And that would equal the intercept. So we would have exact multicollinearity and we would be unable to estimate one of the coefficients because one can always be computed from the others. The solution is to just leave out this column. But thinking the other direction, it is clear we need to use different entries for k-1 classes here. So that's where the k-1 comes from. And if you think that's true, what we really need to have is with this extra column of ones, we need to be able to spun a k-dimensional space. So let me try to write that a bit. A1 maps to, if I write the intercept, let's write the intercept 1, and then we have 1, 0, up to 0. Then A2 maps to 1 for the intercept, but then 0, 1, and lots of zeros. And that goes all the way up to AK minus 1, which maps to 1 for the intercept, and then zeros all the way through, and the 1 in the last field. And finally, AK was the special one, the reference level that maps to still one for the intercept, but then zeros throughout here. And if you check this out, that is K vectors here, which are linearly independent. They form a basis of a K-dimensional space. Not an orthogonal basis, but they do span the whole space. And that is really the property we need. So when I said we need k minus 1 of these columns. That was really true in the context of the intercept, which make that here orthogonal. If you have no intercept, you can fit models with no intercept, and then you would actually need k separate columns to describe a factor with k levels. And if you check what r does, that's actually what r does. So in a model with no intercept, the factor codings are different, and there is another column, so you have k columns in models with no intercept, where column k is what you would think it would have a 1 here, but only if the intercept is not there. Good, so that's what we need. We need k vectors here, which are linearly independent, so they span k-dimensional space. And I wrote column vectors here, we got that's the normal way to write vectors, but they will turn into rows in the design matrix. And now the question is, what else could one do? So Let's call it v1, v2, up to vk. And what I say is any choice of these vectors vk, which spans a k-dimensional space, if we count the intercept here, this would work. 
So there is a choice. And the most important thing is that choice does not affect fitted values. So if you make a different choice, I'll discuss a few in the next few minutes, then fitted values stay the same. But what does change is the regression coefficients and the interpretation of the regression coefficients. For this example, let's just continue from here. So if we have a sample of class 1, then y hat is, well, we have this one here, so 1 times beta 0, and then we have that one here, plus 1 times beta hat 1, plus whatever we may have. Then if we have class 2, then we have y hat is still 1 times beta hat 0, but now we have 1 times beta hat 2, no beta hat 1, and then whatever other columns may be there. And then the only special one is class k, where we have y hat is beta hat 0, and there is no plus anything, because there are no additional entries here, it's all zeros. So that's it. I mean, plus other inputs and plus error. But there we have already seen this, we can interpret these beta hat 1 and beta hat 2 as change of the intercept. So here the intercept effectively is beta hat 0 plus beta hat 1, here it's beta hat 0 plus beta hat 2, and here it's just beta hat 0. So beta hat 1 is interpreted as the change of intercept relative to the reference level, which in my example was class k. Beta hat 2 is change of intercept for class 2 relative to class k. So that would change if we put different vectors here, because these entries of the vectors were which went into this argument. Good. So why would one do that? So sometimes for more specialized situations, actually different interpretations are easier to work with. That's one reason. And the second reason is that affects entries in the design matrix, and that can affect conditioning of the design matrix. So if we have k equals 3 and an intercept, then the design matrix would be, there's always ones here, and then sometimes we have a one here, sometimes we have a one here, say another one here, and sometimes we have zeros. So it could look like this. And we know from our discussion about collinearity, it would be nice if these columns were orthogonal, or close to orthogonal, that reduces the error in the coefficient estimates. It doesn't do anything for fitted values, but coefficients have a better chance of being significantly different from zero, and the errors of the coefficients will be smaller. So if we look at the first two here, these two, you see, they have no chance of being orthogonal, because we would, for the inner product, take this times this, plus this times that, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, this, add it up, and if it's orthogonal, we would like to get zero, and well, we add up positive terms and zeros, but unless this column is empty, there is no way we get zero. So having some negative values here would not be an absurd thing, because it would help with orthogonality, and same for the other column. And there is a way, a factor coding, which is helping with this. This is called deviation coding for historical reasons. And that is very similar to the indicator function coding we had before. Let's just do something with five levels for illustration. So here we would have 1, and then 1, 0, 0, 0. The first one is the intercept. Then a 2 would map to 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and so on. A 3 maps to 0, 0, 1, 0. A 4 maps to 0, 0, 0, 1. All as before, but now the change comes in the mapping of the reference level. And what you do there is you set it all to minus 1 instead of to 0. And if you check, it's very easy, you see that still spans a five-dimensional space. And the effect of this is, if I just modify this example here, in the case, now here we had only three classes or only two columns, but in the case where we are in the reference level, we get minuses here. And now you see the inner product of the first two columns, for example, that is now slightly improved because we have a minus here, so if we take the inner product, it's 1 plus 0 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, so it's 2 instead of 3 before. And similarly, for the other column, the inner product is, well, 1 times 0 is 0, 1, still 1, 0, and 0. So here, this column is now orthogonal to the intercept, and there is a bit of a price, so these columns are no longer orthogonal, they were before, but still the inner product is 1, which is not too bad. And it turns out that sometimes can improve conditioning, and now the question is just how do we interpret this? And that is, of course, a bit more tricky, so if 
we have a sample of class 1, then y hat would be beta 0 plus beta 1, class 2 would be beta 0 plus beta 2, class 3 would be beta 0 plus beta 3, class 4 would be beta 0 plus beta 4. But now comes the complicated bit, namely, if we have a sample of class 5, then we would get beta 0 minus beta 1 minus beta 2 minus beta 3 minus beta 4. And then here plus error, and that's for class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, and the reference level class 5. So you see that's a bit more difficult to interpret, but it is not absurd. I mean, it is still shift the levels around, and there may be situations where that makes sense. So there it is. And then if you have a look in the note, there is another example listed, which is similar in character. And finally, not in the notes, but built into R, there is also a coding built on orthogonal polynomials, which makes a bit more determined effect to get these columns to be orthogonal. Okay, and that's really all I wanted to tell you here. So there are different ways to encode the classes of a factor, to encode the levels of a factor. And they do differ in the interpretation of the regression coefficients, like here but they do not differ in what fitted values you get. So you get different values for the regression coefficients here, but if you actually fit the values, then the y hat will come out the same. Okay, so that's that. And this discussion concludes our section about just linear regression or how to use linear regression in practice. And with the next video coming in a few days, and the corresponding section in the notes, we'll start an entirely new topic, namely we'll start talking about robust regression, and that's different estimators for the regression coefficient, which are made so that they work still when there are outliers present in the data. But that's a topic for another day, so see you soon, and bye bye for now.